Okay, excellent. Don't press other buttons. Okay. I don't know what, I don't know what they do. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. I, um, I've been traveling Southeast Asia for about the last year, but prior to that, I was on Maui, and I was doing my own art. I had my own gallery, but um, after the gallery, the thing that I really got involved with was arts education on the island. I got to be a part of several groups and uh, became quite immersed in arts integration. And it's um, something that I find really fascinating and want to share with you. What arts integration is, is it's um, taking the arts into all the other subjects in the classroom. And it's um, using, it, using the arts as a learning tool. And I find it very um, fascinating because it's a chance to deepen our experience of learning. Instead of just learning from the textbook, you are jumping into the stories that you are learning through drama. You are dancing your understanding of the solar system. You are singing about biology. You are, you are using all the arts to create your understanding. And through this, of course, you are learning um, creativity and other skills, which are often called 21st century skills, the, the, the sort that Daniel Pink talk about and such. And a lot of the people that I work with, a lot of times in, for grants, they wouldn't even say that they were doing, using this money for arts directly. They would say that they were using this for 21st century skills. Of course, what they were actually doing was getting grant money to buy art supplies or to hire a dance instructor, but it was all to the same end. And also the arts, the way I see it, are how we respond to the world. So sticking the arts in one little compartment of, if you're lucky, maybe you get to do it an hour a week in school. Or maybe, you know what, we don't have time or funding for that. And it's this little separate box that we can easily go and get rid of. And the arts are not that. They're how we experience the world and how we respond to it. And so using the arts to learn math, to learn science, to learn everything that we need to learn in school, and all those things that, gosh darn it, they are requiring teachers to teach in school to make it a valuable learning experience instead of a um, a bunch of benchmarks that they have to somehow slog through and then someday get to the interesting things that they can spare five minutes from the students. Uh, it makes those things valuable. So uh, these are some of the students that I worked with and this is them holding up um, some pieces from a project I did where we were learning about the ecology of coral reefs, what damages coral reefs, and what can um, be done to protect them. And this was done as a co-teaching project, so both me and the teacher were working in conjunction. And the school, I, I was working in a uh, school that um, was actually started to be an arts integration school. This was a public school. It um, was a new school in a new subdivision, but as much as the students came from the fancy new houses, they were also coming from low-income areas just beyond it. Uh, it had a full range of students there, a lot, some who um, with special needs, some whose English was not their first language, um, but they were all coming to this school where they were learning in this style. And the reason this existed uh, was because of certain teachers who got involved with an organization on the island who was then connected with the Kennedy Center, which is a center in Washington, D.C., which has been spreading arts integration all over North America, all over the United States, researching and um, professional development for teachers and teaching artists. And they actually spent a year having these people research and decide on the definition of what arts integration was. What is this actual thing that we're doing? And as you can see, it's got a lot of words in there. They were nice about making them colorful. But it's still, oh, it, it, I took a whole like, three hour seminar where they unpacked this. And we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to learn you through the arts. And so we're going to pretend that we are in third grade today. And I never made it that far. <laughs> can I have two volunteers? Who'd like to be volunteers for me? Would you pass out paper? And can I have someone who will pass out pencils? Oh, come on, you're a third grade 
do not be like this. <laughs> Actually, I need one. Keep and so, just so you know, you will be wanting to be in a position where you can draw on this, not immediately, but in a moment. So, sitting back, you might want to bend forward on your bean bag so that you can draw on the floor or grab one of those tables. Um, I love that this is a non-standard classroom where we don't have all the desks. Um, one is fine. If you need more, then we can. I'll just we can leave a, a pile around the room or whatever. Man, I haven't used this for years. <laughs> what pencils? Yeah. <laughs> I bought this brand of pencils last time I was in Malaysia, and I was like, these are such good pencils for just being standard number two pencils. Uh -huh. I couldn't find them in any other countries. So, I took this from actual benchmarks from the ones we used back in Hawaii, because they're the ones that I'm familiar with. But whatever school system you're in, you of course have your your um, list of things in each subject that need to be covered throughout the year. So third grade, geometric shapes and their properties and relationships. Compare basic properties of isosceles, equilateral, and right triangles. Um, look, this is what I'm using. So if you all remember yesterday in math class, we were learning about triangles, right? And so I've got these triangles here. Who can remember, what's the name of this type of triangle? Uh, isosceles triangle. Isosceles, how do you know that they're isosceles triangles? You're a mathematician. I was thinking. No, okay. Speak up, please share with us. Uh, right angle triangle. Oh, but, but just are they... Isosceles, uh, because their two sides are equal. So. Okay, so, so two sides. Two sides are equal? So two sides of equal length. And, and, and I, that, one, that one didn't work. But <laughs> that one, what's this, what is this one here? Right side. That would be a right angle triangle. That one stuck in there. It was very sneaky. And so what type of triangle is this one? Equilateral. It's an equilateral. And so this one's an equilateral. How do we know that this would be an equilateral triangle? What? <laughs> how do we know that this is an equilateral triangle? If you saw this triangle in the street, how would you know all, all, all type of All equal? sides are the same. They're all the same. Do you see that? <laughs> now, this was drawn without a ruler. I didn't measure this, but we're going to, today while we're drawing, we're going to do our best to use control with our pencil and um, careful drawing. And so it will not come out perfect, but you can nonetheless <laughs> do your best. And these ones, Teacher, yes. I'm only going to do this in grade 10. <laughs> well, it wasn't the standard, so <laughs> we're not going to go into we're not going to um, go into full trigonometry today. Don't worry. <laughs> and then we have right triangles, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we have our three types of triangles: isosceles, equi equilateral, and right. And so right triangles, if you draw a right triangle, you take the corner, you're not sure if it's a right triangle. Take the corner of your page, and if it fits right in, then it's a right triangle, because this is, what sort of angle? Right. It would be a right angle. Okay. So there we go. Whoops, that's a little bit ahead. But so what we're going to do is we're going to use these three types of triangles today. And you are going to be architects. You're going to build a building. This is going to be an amazing building. It can be huge. It can be your personal, um, your, your personal mansion. It can be a skyscraper. It could be any sort of building that you want it to be. But it's going to be made out of completely of triangles. And I want you to think about the types of triangles you're using. I would like you to try to use these three types of triangles. Here's a sketch that I started. I didn't get very far with it, and I was doing it pretty late at night last night, but I bet you can do much better. But I was starting to build a building, and I wanted to give you an idea. These shapes <coughs> I was building by putting triangles together. So we're going to take the next little while and 
I would like you to see what sort of building you can come up with. And I have a couple of pieces by architectures here. This is one that I found. This one is by a scoop of architecture. What sort of triangles do you think she used? It's so, 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 so you can see those in there. Do you see any right triangles? Yeah. Mm. Maybe a couple, not as many though, huh? I, actually, you can, if, if there is a square or a rectangle, you can just partition it. Mm, definitely. So there's ways of making squares out of triangles or finding triangles within squares. And so there's what, this is another view of that same picture, or that same building that she imagined. And that's quite pretty, isn't it? So you get to come up with your own. And here's a couple of buildings that really exist. Um, now, isn't that interesting? They made a curved shape out of triangles. It's amazing what you can do with architecture, isn't it? And then here are two. This one is by a very famous architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. I didn't manage to figure out who this one was by, but I thought it was a pretty cool building, so I had to include it. I like how the triangles are going from different angles. And so that's a couple pictures to just give you some ideas. And now, I want to see what all of you can come up with. A couple things to think about with your pencil. When we've drawn in the past, have we pushed really hard with our pencil? Or do you, you, you sketch lightly just in case you don't like your line or it's not perfect? Which one would you do? Would you push hard to begin with or would you sketch lightly? Lightly. lightly. Let's draw lightly. And I, we're going to have about maybe seven minutes for this project. It's not a very long project, um, but I'd like to see what type of buildings you can come up with. And so if you want to practice drawing your triangles to the side first, you can. But I would like to see everyone come up with an amazing building that no one has ever seen before. Oh, you did not get one? Here you go, sir. And if you do not have a hard service, I re definitely recommend a hard rather than string service. Here's another one of these. I'm going to bring this. Perhaps some of you can use this. This little me. Okay. You build this, I want you to think about it. What you're building would actually be able to stand up. Just something to think about. Know which where the ground is. And it can give you a really wild shape.
one thing that's interesting. This building uses all the same size of triangles, but some of them use different size triangles. Some use very large, and then you'll see smaller triangles in other areas. So you can think about that in your design. If you, need, if you feel like the shapes should all be the same size, or if you think that your shape, if your building calls for patterns of large shapes as well as small shapes. Depends on the building, doesn't it? And if you're not sure what your building is supposed to be, you can also just go with it and start putting shapes together to see where it goes. Can I tell you what kind of buildings it is? Yeah. Honestly, you're on that view as well. You can research later. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> using arts to learn about math in this case. So quick, just sort of like, quick, 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 quick some summer getaway. <laughs> period in just a little while because I don't want to run long on the talk. But if you want to keep drawing after that, I heartily encourage it. Um, so for, the, for this stage, think about wrapping up your design. It doesn't, you don't have to feel like it's finished and perfect, but this is just a early sketch. This is an idea that you're trying out. You can think of it like a rough draft. And for this rough draft of this building idea that you've come up with, that's living inside your brain right now, I want you to come up with a name for it. Something that tells us something about this building, what type of building it might be, and write that down on the paper. So, come up with a name for your building and add any final details for the moment. You're welcome to keep drawing on this for the rest of the night. For now, we're going to finish up in just a minute. So in one minute, I'd like everyone to have a name for their building. Why don't you put 
goes on the back table just so that that part of the room can reach pencils. <laughs> Separate lobby structures. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps the, they fit into the landscape in different areas. And so each one is made out of triangles, but it's small and simple. But they all have a separate purpose. Maybe. Yeah, see? You come up with a story for it, and then you can make it all work. a lot of people are finishing up. As I said, you can draw on these more later, but for now we're going to call this stage done. And what my thought was was to have us to have a gallery walk and walk around and see what everyone's work is, but I think there would be a lot of tripping over beanbags. So what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us use this space up here, being that there's less um, things underfoot. So. I would like everyone to take, yeah, um, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just pass the pictures up front. Don't be shy. You will get them back. on the far side. We could do a little bit of a counterclockwise Carousel. walk. <laughs> yeah. So counterclockwise so you can see them a little bit further. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a space. It's a space. Well, sometimes Billies come from very abstract sketches. Sometimes they come from little noodles, and they really, I don't know how this is going to turn into that skyscraper, but I think there's something there. So sometimes how that starts, these are really just at the first stage of when you turn to something. Or you can use just like a few parts of the picture. Exactly. Like exactly. I wouldn't be. Consciously, that he's a he or she is a very stable person in terms of everyday life. Where else you see, with all due respect to that, that one over there, the multimedia tower, right? It doesn't look stable to me. So this person, whoever that person may be, I I see that uh, he or she has got great imagination, 
but unsure whether that thing can stand or not structurally. Interesting. Oh, I said, like, whether it looks like it's different. It can topple, right? Because. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple interesting things there. One, some of the most amazing buildings you look at, you're like, I don't even know how that piece stands up, but it does. And then, there's, it's also very interesting, there's what an artist makes and what they feel. And then there's what everyone else sees and what they feel, and both those things are important. And that's, um, that's excellent. Now, we've been sort of going back and forth in this conversation between being third graders looking at art and also being adults observing this whole experience. Um, but now that we have made some art, we have observed the art, and we've also talked about the experience we've processed it a bit. Do you have any observations from what we've done all the way through, looking at this process we've been through? Was it enjoyable? Yes. How would you have felt if we had, instead of sharing the art and talking about it, basically been like, thank you for making things, I'm going to collect them all now, and stick them in the corner. We'll get back to it later. And not just that for a third grade. A typical lesson with regarding triangles, okay, teacher talking about different shapes, okay, not raw shape, okay, correct raw, you know, that, that would be the lesson. Here, the child will be engaged, but we have to come up with the building. Oh, okay. And then can correct, uh, this is a nice house, and this identify. So you, you get the child engaged as opposed to the child being a like, whole, oh, especially a subject like math, which is considered one that kids tend to tune out of. And with all, uh, and with everything said there, nonetheless, in a third grade class, you would have, before this, practiced drawing all of three shapes. You would have had that as part of the learning process. I find with kids, you can do any sort of project with them, and you can get any sort of results, but you have to do all the work to get there. And you, so you look at, can I make that amount of work happen with resources and time to get that? And, um, but all those pieces go together. Any other observations? So, uh, if we were to do this iteratively, so now we've done it once, yes. and see what you do, and I see what everyone's doing. So yeah. maybe if we do it again, that's like, oh, I want to do that yeah. again. So you would get an iterative understanding, like, I want to yeah. see that idea and fit in with that. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly. It yeah. would evolve all of the designs yeah. pretty fast. That's excellent. Another thing I see, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, but I, I recommend if you do this at a third grade, Class, you probably see the same sort of like distribution of types of work. Mm -hmm. So some looks more simplistic, some looks more complex, some looks more elaborate, some looks more like really just out there. I mean, it, it reflects the same distribution uh, in probably it's the same distribution because there will be some who are just not interested in it. And so they're like, I do my right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and need to be engaged in some other way. Yes, maybe yes, the right thing hasn't hit right. for them yet. That's right. And and maybe when the sharing happens, hopefully, you know, uh, there will be some. Then they're like, yeah. I want to make my yeah, own. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I can make one better, way better than that. Just give me five minutes. Yeah. 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 Like, so Sorry. to what you said, yeah. uh, this might bring out different skills with the kids. Yes. You'll see that some kid is very good at getting the lines straight mm. and getting being able to, you know, visual spatial. You yes. get the whereas some kids mm. might be very artistic. Yes. And maybe some kids are not good visually, so they can't conceptualize. So yeah. you can identify the kids' strengths and using something, something like that. Yeah. Something very abstract. Mm -hmm. You have to know that. I mean, that's, that's, that's how I feel like, because yeah. like, you can almost guess, like, that was not much just that that was really crazy. That was crazy in the sense that, wow, it's just going nuts. And there are some that already started out with a plan and executing a plan. So, yeah. You could um, if the kids like colored in each of the three triangles in different colors, like for the primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and then they can really identify some of the kids that are artistic. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just made a piece of artwork and can be part of it, and also something like that. The colors could overlap with the other colors. But that was another thing that I wanted to. I mean, a couple people touched on this. Um, I'm still interested. If anyone have any observations overall? But also. Um, where do you see this first little exercise expanding as far as bringing it more deeply into math or into art or into other subjects? Where do you, what ideas do you have for where could we go next? Well, application of math, which I think is the most important part of understanding math, it's actually applying it to something. The best way to apply anything is to make something out of it. <coughs> the first step of making something is to design. So this is the bridge to, to bridging you know, the, the conceptual to, to the real by actually 
throws it on paper and it gives you a blueprint box. So this, yeah. is, this is the bridge to, to actually making something in the real world, which is the ultimate in absorbing how to do something, absorbing math, absorbing information. Actually, this particular thing is very uh, apt in teaching fractals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because fractal is something very simple, but also very, very fundamental. And you can show that to third grade. Yeah, you simple. can. Like you can't yeah. give them the whole equation, expecting to play the equation, mm -hmm. but you can. Yeah, you can show them, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very useful. Can you incorporate into like writing and theater too? Like if, if each person took their picture and this is about work and created a story out of it, maybe you made one character out of it um, as well, and then they can sat together to the stories that the group created a skit, like then they can rehearse and act for the class of the you know, I like there what Ian said as well. He's talking about um, this being designing the bridge to actually making. These could be make, these could be models, or these could be say sets, which could be pretty darn cool. Maybe you ended up narrowing it down, narrowing it down to one or maybe three of them. But these would all make really rad say sets. I got other interesting great tree observations that you find that. Just like grade three, all the opinions are coming from where the teacher is. Mm. And I was like, I'm not meaning to ask you actually yeah, down so, here. So I'm moving over here now. You're going to show up. Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Real sticks and let them mix them up. Just tell them that two equal sticks, you make it a triangle. So try to build what you just made last week. Mm. Use, use straws. Yeah. Because then you get to structurally save everything if it doesn't work. So you can also see like what kind of shapes are more structurally sound. Yeah. Or you can go a different route and teach factors. <laughs> Who found this hard? I found it difficult. I found it difficult. I think some people find it difficult. Actually, I have been doing this kind of thing since third grade. <laughs> 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 no, thank you very much for your question there. I think that's a very yeah. important question to ask to honor that this yeah. was a challenge. And so this, who, who did this found this to be challenging? <clears throat> Yeah, Especially think, at first. Yeah, I think the act of having to turn something into a shape. I'm guessing that adults find it harder than kids. I think if, if you ask the kids to draw something, you yeah, just draw, and adults true. will think, how should I draw it? Do oh, I look good? Yeah. Yeah. I think there will be kids who just draw yeah. 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 There will be kids who just jump into this, like, yeah. like, like yeah. nothing, but there are also kids who are like, you yeah. know what? That's I can draw you yeah. trees like you wouldn't believe. Well, I don't know about this triangle business, and and they'll but then once they see other people's stuff, or maybe they start drawing triangles anyways, and then they hit on something, and suddenly they've got the most amazing castle or something. But it's that definitely that willing to let's see where this is going, and then you make your connections along the way, and then you can build on it whether it is um, building the actual thing or turning these into finished art projects. Art wise, I could see these sketches either directly on here if that's sort of what time and medium allows or to reiterate them and create a more finished product um, they could definitely be colored and have overlapping colors or be color keyed to the different types of triangles so that you can see quickly and you know that all the right triangles are orange and um, you, you could do it like that or you could leave the coloring very much up to them you could do value shading with a pencil so each triangle has a dark to light shading with a pencil and that would give a sense of dimension to it because you have these different shadows even if you didn't go as far to connect having the shadows be all perfect to make it look truly three-dimensional it starts to sort of get that, that that idea and practice again um pencil control and shading and making something look realistic which third graders are starting to their they're, they're, third graders are great because they're right in the middle of, right in the midst of love, being really good at drawing things in the iconic kid way, but getting more and more hungry for the drawing things realistically, which fourth and fifth grade really starts to turn on. Um, 
turn on and hit if they haven't already decided that they can't draw, which is just sad. <laughs> because then they end up being adults who won't do it. Um, but the idea is for that not to happen because it was happening in all their subjects anyways. And they still love math too amazingly. <laughs> Um, so there's those ideas, and um, there's also, what about, especially on a more finished one where it's very clear what types of triangles, actually counting how many of each type of triangle you have, creating a tally for each paper, and then a tally for the whole class, so you know which class, you can look at ratios, you can look at proportions, you can percentages, and so that's bringing it into those even non-geometric math, but they're still looking at their artwork relating to something that they made in order to then practice their, their fractions or their percentages and those sorts of things. So that's another way. Any other observations? This whole exercise is very technical. And from a non-technical side of, of point of view, right, on a holistic point of view, so are you saying that once they do this and we have all the kids lay out and then we do this exact same exercise and discuss? Mm -hmm. I, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. There are two ways. The, the, the lazy ones who are just you know, halfway through, they might get uh, inspired and say, okay, my friend can do that, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. But have you ever thought that those who have actually done a very meticulous, very good drawing, and but they're not being rewarded highly because they're all the same, why did I do that? You know, I wasted so much energy, I could have just, everyone's the same, I'm not being appreciated. They might downgrade in the next exercise. I think the way the um, presentation of the art, the sharing of the art, the talking of the art, you create a culture of value about it, recognizing the interesting things. And I think the students who put value into their work, if you have it, the right culture, will continue to feel value that their artwork here. They might wish that they were the ones talked about more if they're that type of kid. And if theirs isn't talked about that day, then maybe they'll be like, oh, but they talked about so and so's. But if they, if overall the environment for the experience is good, then I don't think it will poison anything. What does do that is the, the teacher going over, why did you do it that way? That's or nice. that's exactly, that's like. Or even drawing on the paper. Yeah, it's like, that's why is there a doodle in the corner? That's, that's, that's not a triangle. Or, I mean, any of those sorts of things. Why do you draw a circle there? You said triangle. Yes. Oh, and, and, I mean, there are times in classrooms where I'm like, I try to get kids to not do the little triangle sun in the corner. Oh, because, I did that. Because, well, I did it. I did it. We all did it. But it's like, it's this, it's this childhood thing that I'm not, I'm not sure there's, I, I'm not sure why we all did that. But if you're teaching other, uh, other, drawing skills and whatnot, it doesn't always need to be there. And so you try to suggest, but you 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 suggest rather than um, insist. insist and rather than saying anything's wrong. Nothing's wrong. And another thing that I always try to suggest away, away from is when teachers or teacher helpers or, or even even uh, assistance for special needs students, if they can hold the pencil, don't you take the pencil from them and draw and fix it. Mm. I mean, even like I mean, even special need cases, it's really like you know what? Even like let them have the experience. And with regular kids who are drawing but having a little bit of a hard time or whatever, don't draw on their paper. Whatever you do, don't draw on the paper. You want to show them something? Grab your own paper. You can demo all you want on your own paper. <laughs> And so that's just another thing which, again, um, I feel that violates the, the experience the kid is having with their art. And also, um, I use that same suggestive as my manner for trying to change the, the um, experience. Um, so I think that's, um, I, I think that does us pretty well with this little experience here. Um, the, Last thing I wanted to share with how is a little bit of how this all tends to ha has come across to happening in the schools and spreading. In the public schools, oftentimes in schools with few resources, but then being able to get grants and being able to grow this, being able to train their teachers to 
I understand this, ending up with principals who are supporting this in as a school, because if you were one teacher in a school who was trying to work like this and everyone else is by the book, um, you're going to feel pressure for being different. But there are teachers who stand out and pursue this professional development on their own um, and do amazingly. But it's so much better when you have a group. In the um, states, so much of it is from the Kennedy Center. It's sort of the organization up top spreading down. They've got a website I'll put up, which has resources and lesson plans and things for parents as well and whatnot. So you can take bits and pieces. But how this is spread, number one, is that they pay absolute attention to showing proof. Proof to the students, showing and sharing the students' own learning. What we did here today was CPR, create, perform, or present. You can't really perform visual arts, but you perform if you're doing dance or drama or singing. Um, so present, and then respond. We responded, so that was part of our talking. We were, so we created that, um, we, we got to observe our own learning. And then putting this up in the classroom so we're seeing it, and showing in all the way different ways how this related to our math. And so seeing that in our class, so we're constantly seeing proof of our learning, the teacher, the student is. Putting it in the hallway, then you get to the rest of the class, the rest of the students are seeing proof, the other teachers are seeing proof, the principal is seeing proof that the arts are being used for learning. And you put up those standards. This is what we learned. This isn't just, oh, look, we made some pretty pictures. We learned these standards that everyone has to learn, these benchmarks. Um, by doing this. And these are the, the vocabulary words we use. Basically, everything that we use, you put it all up there. And in situations where the community can see it, if you have an event at your school, have it all up there, showing how you learned everything. Document it. Um, they, like, if they're, um, basically, I mean, they, they use um, photos, they, they photograph those kids like crazy so that they have documentation for um, grants and whatnot, and for um, whatever different resource, and they are recording everything. And part of the education system in the States for the past decade has been no child left behind, which was this thing where they said, we have to get these kids better at math and, and, and reading and stuff, and so they're going to get tested a whole bunch. And what happened was that resources and time for everything else went out the window, because they had to spend all their time preparing to take tests. And but what, what, about, what about my 21st century skills? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but instead, they're like, okay, we have to learn this stuff. We're going to use the arts to learn that stuff that's on the test. So it's a, it's a, a real valuable learning experience in the meanwhile. And then, you, and then you take those tests, and guess what? The kids were engaged during the learning, and so the tests show good results. And then the, the powers that be, so hey, your school got good results. And you go, this was our method. Mm -hmm. And here is all the proof and research. And so they're compiling their test scores, actually using that. So if there's a way in your organization, in your whatever you, it is that you are doing or, or um, pursuing with education, if you can meet the goals of the larger groups, whatever it is, with your own means and show them that, then they can actually become your proponents. They can actually say, hey, this stuff is it works. Mm -hmm. And then you have arts being a part of the classroom rather than to being passed out. I would just like to say, I would just like to say, I think it would be awesome after uh, drawing on a paper to give to kids to, to uh, translate it to a computer. They can like they could use like different thicknesses of the lines and maybe color it and maybe do some like you know, rotations and stuff like that. I think it would be cool. Excellent. I love that. We're still coming up with ideas. Excellent. Take, we no intention of bringing this into a um, from sketch to computer. Thank you. Artists, please bring your artwork home with you. Please take it with you. As you pick those up, I'll just show my last couple of pictures. This was that definition again, and that might ring true some more. But more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, here are just some images of proof. From the artwork being shared, this was a, a art exhibit for the community. And so
to the community, this was in a community center, so it was in the newspaper that people could come to this one evening. And these were artwork made by kindergartners. And this was artwork, again, on display in the classroom hallway, put up for a teacher night. And these were artwork about a place they, they learned about, um, they, they went on a field trip and learned about the ecology of the area and the neighborhood. These were photos taken by the teacher, sketches, thumbnails from class, and telling the steps that we went through. And then this was also a dance class. You can't really read it, but you can see that this was all just packed up to the walls of the classroom. And then again, artwork on display, and behind it, even more bulletin boards upstairs and downstairs, full of this is what we're learning, this is the artwork, or the, the documentation. If it's pictures of the people, of the students dancing or whatever, this, or these are the benchmarks, these are the vocabulary words, everything. So basically the parents or other community members, whoever shows up, is learning too, and is learning about how the students learn. And one last more from the students learning about the coral reefs. And it's looking at the healthy coral reef they learn and learned what they should do to protect it. And a couple of the websites. Um, <clears throat> Kennedy Center is, this is, I'd say, the number one website. I'll post it on WebCamp as well. These guys are excellent. I've taken classes from them. This is the school that I work at. And this is the organization on Maui, which also has some interesting information on their site as well. So, artists, congratulations on your Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. <laughs>